So, you have to write a paper, prepare a speech, or find information for some other purpose. You can make it up as you go along, consult a psychic, go to Wikipedia the night before the assignment's due, or you can make a plan and use the library's resources. Hi, I'm Molly Montgomery, one of the librarians at Idaho State University. Your professor, Dr. Stam, asked me to talk to you about information literacy. Why is a librarian qualified to speak about this? Well, a large part of being information literate means knowing how and where to search and how to tell the good information from the less than useful stuff. And that's what librarians do all the time. So what is information literacy and why should you care? Information literacy is a fancy way to describe how you should go about doing research. Now, I'm not talking about the doing experiments kind of research. We're talking about hitting the books, journals, and websites kind of research. So being information literate means that you recognize that you lack all the information you need. You know what types of information can answer your question or need. You know how to find what you need. And you can evaluate resources critically. And finally, that you can share what you find. Now that doesn't sound so bad, right? So let's hit each step one at a time. First, you're assigned a topic or you get to pick one yourself. Can you list all the major issues associated with this subject? Do you think you could teach someone everything they need to know? Probably not. Well, what's the next step? We want to get a working knowledge of our subject. So how is this done? You want to get out there and find some background information. Google to the rescue. Now, I know that Google and Wikipedia have a bad reputation with a lot of teachers and professors, and with good reason, but this really doesn't apply when you're just learning about a topic. For the most part, these are not going to be the sources that you're citing. You can read through a Wikipedia article on, say, cyberbullying to learn about the main issues and to get an idea of where you want to go with your research. Background research is a way to give your research direction. Now, don't forget about the library for this step, too. We have some great online encyclopedias that can help. Very few libraries have full sets of encyclopedias in print anymore. They take up way too much room and they rarely get used. We have moved into online sources. Nice, since you can do your research from home or anywhere. To find a list of our online encyclopedias, go to the Resources by Subject, find Reference Sources, and then click on Encyclopedias. We have quite a few subject-specific ones, but my favorite is the Gale Virtual Reference Library. This has over 1,000 sources, all searchable from one spot. Lovely! The next step in the process is knowing what kind of information sources can answer your question or fill your information need. Sometimes this is pretty obvious. Do you need information on something that's cutting edge or new? Well, then an older textbook is probably not the best source, while journal articles or reliable websites would be good. Most professors are going to want you to use scholarly sources versus popular. Scholarly sources usually look boring and will have reference lists. Popular sources will generally look prettier and are less boring to read. Just like with finding background information, the library can help you choose the best sources for your topic. Go back to the Resources by Subject link, then look for the category that best matches what you need. ISU librarians have selected the best databases, books, and other sources for each subject. If you don't find what you need, call, email, or come by the library. Now we're to the step of information literacy where you have to know how to search for what you need. This is where people are either insecure or overconfident about their searching skills. Sure, we can all find stuff on Google, but are you finding what you really need? And what about all those library databases? Scary! But really, you don't have to be a librarian to find stuff. When it comes to searching the databases, just remember that it's kind of like driving a car. You are perfectly capable of driving a Toyota or a Ford, some of the buttons and features might be a little different and in different places, but the basic principle of driving is the same. Using databases is very similar. Just learn the basics and you'll be fine. One of the first hurdles to overcome is to just know what to use and where to find it. Back to our Resources by Subject page. The library has a ton of EBSCO databases, so I'm going to show you one of these. 
So say my topic is on cyberbullying, and I'm really interested in the education or school aspect of this topic. So I'm going to look through these subject pages and see if I can find one specific to education. And there's one right there. There are tabs up at the top to help you choose what you want. I'm going to go under Find Articles and select this Core Education Resources. These are some of the databases that are best used for searching for education topics. I'm going to select ERIC. Now, you can make a fancy search with all the advanced features, but you can also run a pretty basic one, too. The first step is just to enter your search term. When it comes to entering search terms, less is better. You don't want to have too many terms in there because it will over-limit your search. You can limit your search by using some of the features over here on the left side. You can limit to full text, you can do peer review, you can limit by publication date by just moving this slider bar you want something a little more recent. You can also limit to the source type, whether it's academic journal, magazine, book, or so on. One of the number one questions we receive at the library is how can I get the full text of an article or a book or whatever? One of the first things you look for is that find it at ISU button. That means that we do have the full text, we just don't have it in this particular database. So you can just click on the link and follow it to where it goes. Or you look for the PDF link. If you see that, then the full text of the article is available right here in this database. But what about this number six, where there's no find it at ISU and there is no PDF link? It's time to panic. Okay, just kidding. You can always order articles via interlibrary loan for free. Another tip is that it's also worth copying and pasting the article title into Google. Sometimes someone has posted a PDF. Now, there is a lot more to searching than this. Duh. Don't ignore the help features on websites. They can actually be really useful. Or, of course, ask a librarian. An essential component to the information literacy process is being able to critically evaluate what you find. Mainly, this applies to stuff online, but you need to look at journal articles and books with a critical eye as well. Librarians frequently use tools and worksheets to help students figure out if something's actually worth including in a college-level paper. The most popular one has the worst acronym, CRAP. I know. Oh well, at least you won't forget it. C stands for currency. Is this source current? Can you find a date when it was published or updated? This can sometimes be tricky for websites. Or is currency even important for your topic? Maybe not if you're focusing on history. R stands for relevance. You need to figure out if the source actually helps you answer your research question. A fantastic article on cyberbullying in adults won't really help me if my focus is on middle school students. The first A is for authority. And it's talking about the author or responsible party of the information. Is the author listed? And what credentials do they have to talk about this topic? Remember, anybody can post stuff online. It doesn't make them an expert. The second A is for accuracy. Is the information supported by evidence? Do they cite other sources? Is the information backed up in other places? Watch out for your own personal bias with this one you're much more likely to believe something you already agree with and ignore conflicting evidence. Finally, the P stands for purpose. Why was this information created? Was it to educate and inform? Or was it to persuade or convince or even scare? Sometimes this can be very subtle. The author should make their intentions clear, but they don't always do so. I strongly encourage you to go out and find a few of the crap worksheets. They can be super helpful. Finally, once you've gone through all the steps, you're ready to share what you've found. Now, I'm a librarian, not an English teacher, so I'm no help when it comes to writing the paper, but I do have way too much experience with the citation piece of writing. Mainly because being able to properly cite and give credit to your sources is a huge part of being information literate. Unless you're writing an opinion piece or a work of fiction, you will need to have references. Make sure you know what citation style your professor requires. It will break your heart to create a paper using APA, only to find out that you are supposed to do it in MLA. The citation manuals are definitely the best source, but there's a lot of help to be found online. Being specific is the best way to find what you need, so don't just type in APA citation help into Google. Ask for exactly what you need, like APA citations and book chapters. That's going to save you some time.
There are also these awesome tools called citation managers that can not only help you cite, but they help you stay organized and keep track of everything you find. My favorite is one called Zotero, but you also have access to EndNote online as an ISU student. More information on these can be found on almost all of those resources by subject guides. Finally, don't forget about the Writing Center. They can be a huge help. Information literacy is a process that starts with a need for information and leads you to select sources, search the sources, evaluate what you find, and then share what you found. A big part of becoming information literate is allowing yourself to explore and be curious. Look through the library's website, mess around with the databases, you're not going to break anything, and you'll probably learn some cool things. If you remember nothing else about the process, I encourage you to never be afraid to ask help from a librarian. That is what we do. We start to question our purpose in life if people don't ask us anything. Don't make us have an existential crisis.